So here we are, we're going to learn about how to make caustic topologies in Cinema 4D. Here we go. So, unless you haven't got X particles, I highly recommend you get it. It's a bit spenny, but so many good off the shelf particle system modifiers, dynamics. Um, that are really really good and will take your CGI game to the next level. So anyway, let's get started. So you've got X particles up here, XP system, really nice sort of pre-built uh, system tree uh, opens up um, and like it operates in a similar way to a particle system that's inbuilt in. Cinema already, uh, it all comes from the emitter. So here it is. And if you just press play, instantly it starts generating and birthing a load of particles. Now, before you get going, you do Control D, go into Project Settings or Edit Preferences, Project Settings. Here we are. Change this to 24 frames a second. If you want something a bit smooth, you can go up to 60. I like keeping it to 24 because then you can just go 24, 48, um, and you know that's going to be 10 seconds. So increase this to 480 so you have a nice, actually, let's go 720. So you have a nice 30 second uh, timeline that you can scrub through. All right. So this should just keep going now. Nice. Um, this is not what we want. We want basically just to do a crappy plug. Uh, here we are. Just to show you, although you can just go on the blog anyway, on the post. This is kind of what we want to get, right? We want a series of lines equidistant from one another that deform or are displaced to create this effect of caustics and an undulating sort of sea or landscape, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so you can follow me on this, Shame, shameless plug. So basically the opposite of this, we don't want a totally random emission of particles from a rectangle. We want a line of them where we can really define the space between those and then deform from there. So, go up to your emitter. If you hold down shift, you can open up two tabs at the same time. So it's easy for me to explain. Don't have to do it this way, I like doing it this way. Open this up. And here you've got a series of emission shapes. So they're all pretty self-explanatory. This is a circle now. But what we want is to find a mission. Now you'll get these boxes that appear. If I press play now, you'll see one particle gets emitted per box. And that's exactly what we want. So if we increase the count here, it actually increases the amount of boxes, which means we'll have 20 boxes here and 20 particles get emitted. We always have to go back to the beginning of time like, for a particle to be emitted. Cool. Okay. And it's really simple to modify this. Got all your systems here. Spacing. So we can reduce this to something like 10. Box size is 5. So if we reduce this to 2.5, we can reduce this to 5, cool, so let's just do it with 20 so far to keep it nice and light, alright, there we are, now what we want are splines or lines, so it's very easy, we, want it, we need to generate those. 
So what do we do? We go into generator, we come down here to the drop down and we go for XP trail, which is this really powerful spline generator from particles, which will operate pretty much nearly identically to a tracer with far more um, options and ways to change it. Um, and so something to get used to with XP particles X particles is you always need to reference back to things. So this trail is not going to happen unless you reference what you want the trail to trace. So you need to just drop your emitter here into the emitter tab, go back, and here we are. We have a nice, lovely line. Here we are. Really, really easy. Okay. Cool. Now what you'll notice in here, we skip to this bit, is I've got lines that are slightly more, slightly brighter than the others, which means that I've got two, or seemingly two different systems operating here. But that's not the case. What I've just done is I've separated my emitters into two different groups. Um, that we can then affect each differently. So what we do there, we open up our groups, create a group, and the first one we can just call bright, second one we can call dark, like so. And now you've got to assign an emitter to a group. So what we do is we go into the emitter, go into group, we drop in bright. Now, nothing will happen here. What does happen is the attributes of your group will override the attributes that are inherent in your trail or your emitter. You can then override it on top of that after, but just to warn you, if you've set up some systems here and you put it into a group, the group will override it. For example, if we then change the display of your particles to, where is it? Well, why is 